sponsored by Women Technology. Take advantage of our end of summer promotion, offering a $30 off bundle discount on the whole test takeout panel controls through September 2021. Hello everyone, we hope you're doing absolutely well. I'm joined here by David, one half of Vintage Fair. Say hello. Hello. Yeah, today's a bit of a special day. They very kindly invited me to Fendon Airfield to go up in an aeroplane, a chipmunk we've got here. Uh, we've actually got two today, another one, uh, John is coming in another one, which should be really interesting. And I guess the first thing we do is have a little look at the aeroplane. So what we've got here is the legendary chipmunk, so post-World War II. Yeah, it's 1947. 1947. The, uh, the and these were uh, mainly used as primary trainers for air forces. That's right. So this one is Portuguese. So, interesting. So we're going to have a quick look round. So I have to touch it, make sure it's real. It is, look at that. So what, wow, it's so light and... <laughs> <laughs> it's all very light. It weighs just under a ton, fully loaded. Unbelievable. That thing there, the size of it, fully loaded, weighs less than my very small car. Absolutely amazing. Is it all aluminium? No, it's not. It's all fabric on the flight controls. Wow. Absolutely. So that's, uh, yeah, right, and that's the same thing you get on like a Spitfire or something. Absolutely. Then. Yeah, Spitfire's fabric flight controls. Absolutely it's, amazing. It's very much the same technology. Yep. Uh, and it flies very much like a baby Spitfire. So I'm told by really? How about that? Everyone I've spoken to regarding these in the past couple of weeks says it, they love them. They're their favourite. All sorts of you know amazing reviews I've seen. So that's great. Really, one of the best types of airplanes you can fly. I've done a number of light aircraft now. And I'm yeah. Sure it's really good. Amazing. So this is fabric as well. Yeah. So all fabric on the wings. The first first third is aluminium, and then the fabric from their back. Right. So are these movable flaps. Those are movable flaps. Yeah. Right. So. Two, two stages of the handbrake. And it's everything, everything's going to be just for this weight, so everything's just going to be di direct linkage, yeah, presumably. Yeah. So you hear the pulleys crunching, the, the pulley for the aileron is under here. Yeah. Uh, get that around here. Oh, this is fabric as well. Oh, fabric, yeah, from here backwards, it's fabric. <laughs> wow, this reminds me a long time ago when I made a, a little model RC plane and it was <laughs> not that dissimilar. That's amazing. So it's all in aid of keeping it super light. Yes. Oh, hello. It's the 145 horsepower on this one. Yep, that's all we need. You need it all. Yep. The Havilland Gypsy Major. So I am really looking forward to learning about this type of engine. So this is, you know, kind of piston internal combustion engine as we know it, but, you know, specialised for aviation then. Is that air cooled? That is air cooled, yes. Wow. And it's upside down. And it's upside down. So it's an inverted four cylinder. So here's our heads under here. Yeah. Comes to the crankcase at the top. I have to ask, how on earth does the oiling work then? If it's, is it not gravity oiled? Is it something? No, it's not else? gravity oiled. We've got the oil tank here. And yeah. There's a great big oil pump sat on the back and just pumps it around the whole system. Yeah. Back round through a scavenge pump back into the tank. Same, of course, Dripsy Major. It's going to be covered yeah. in oil at the end of this and it will be pouring out down the bottom. Really? The yeah. It's, it's almost a total loss system. Is that by design? Yeah. Yeah. How fascinating. When it stops leaking, fill it up. <laughs> yeah, well, that's interesting because we, we were just reading on the way that at some point in history, I forget which year it was, someone did 16,000 miles? Yes. 16,000 miles in one of these after 62 airfield stops. That's right. You'd have to, wow. <laughs> Around the world on the chipmunk. Yeah, that's right. So, John, when he arrives, I think he's just, just landed. He's just oh, started. right. Um, he, he flew with Bill Purchase, who did the Around the World flight. Oh, in wow. The area and has some of the antennas on his aircraft from around the world aeroplane. Is that Portuguese as well, that no, one? RAF, that's one. That's RAF. When the chipmunk was in service for its main lifespan, they decided, actually, we don't need this, we'll use the Jet Provost. Yeah, so right. The very first aeroplane you've flown with is Jet Provost. It was yeah. going on the, uh, on the RAF path. Yeah, that must be a very different experience. I'm a big fan of the Provost. Nice <laughs> I machine. really like them. Variable noise machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this prop, so is this steel? Yes. Very metal, metal propeller. Right. And we have, what is, is that the air intake? That's the air intake, yeah. So there's a baffle on that side as well, so the air comes in through the hole and round the back of the engine and back out through the bottom of the gills. Right, so okay. Down. And is that a straight four? Is, it is, yes. Yeah. 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 Our massive hydraulic reservoir. <laughs> That's a, that does just the brakes. That's funny. <laughs> wow. Is that a starter up there? 
Yep, starter up there and the generator's also bolted on there. Some it's, it's weird, it's, it's so different but, but also so again. similar to a car engine. Yep. I can see all the bits, it's just... Yeah, that's, that's the generator. Um, oh, right, on, okay. On the other side there's a starter in right. similar sort of position. So gotcha. We've okay. got the two magnetos, you saw one of these the other side. Yep. Uh, so two magnetos on this rather than um, the standard electrical system for cars. Right, is this the fuel system coming here and yes. regulators and... Yeah, it's the two fuel pumps, Yeah. Uh, what mechanical wobble pumps. So right. we'll prime it here, we're on the ground, we'll be priming it that. later. Yeah. And these two just run off the cam, suck the fuel up and into the carb. Wow. And the carb sat on the other side. And we've got not a dissimilar frame really to how we had on, on some of the Warbirds. It just comes off and supports the engine. Very, very similar. What's... is this the exhaust? No, what yeah, is that? That's um, oil cooler, air intake. Right, oil cooler, air intake. Okay. Powerful um, fairing up here that blows the, blows the air in through yep. there, forces cold air in uh, through a little radiator and yeah. cools the oil down sufficiently. And we've got hydraulic wheel brakes, we said. We have hydraulic wheel brakes, yes. And of course we have typical tail dragger style Landing. How is she? What's she like on the ground? Is she a, a nightmare on, or on the nice wide, handful. nice wide wheels? Very wide wheels. Um, yeah. it, it, it requires three hands to taxi. Uh, so you've got your, your left hand for your throttle, your right hand's on the stick, and you've got to hold that into wind. How right. It is. But then yeah. you also need the handbrake because there's no toe brakes in this. The handbrake lever. Okay. Which is also your left hand. Yeah. So taxiing away from here with the wind from our right, I'll have full right rudder, and if yeah. it's trying to weather cop, which we'll try to do quite happily, yeah. I'll need to pull the brake to the left. Yeah. So I need to. Squeeze it around so only three hands and you throttle a brake and a stick hand. Interesting. And does the handbrake just, just actuate both hydraulic brakes? It goes brakes? whichever way the rudder is. There's two ah, cylinders. Right. Uh, rudder neutral, it does both. Uh, yeah. Left rudder will do left brake and right brake. Right. right. Amazing. Hi, guys. Hello. Who's who, sorry? I'm John. Hi, John. Hello. Nice to meet you. Shaky handy. Yeah. Other half. Yeah, love to meet you guys. Hi there. Hi, love to meet you. Hi there. Right, yeah, we we're just doing our familiarisation, really. Okay, we're going to have a look at the cockpit with David's assistant. So, we have front and rear. Traditionally, that would be student, that would be instructor. We're other way around today, if you like. We're going to have uh, pro in front, uh, newbie in the back. Um, let's have a quick look and see what we recognise, I suppose. So, if we start right in the middle, ADI. So, is that there? Is that, I recognise it, is that the same from the Spit? It is almost the same as the Spit, oh, it's wow. the Mustang, so uh, from oh, DCS it's exactly the same as the Mustang P47. Wow, oh yes, that's exactly where so now I get it. is broken in the back, um, yep. normally you turn it off, but mm -hmm. you can see that gets jammed there at the moment, that should yeah. reset the, the horizon to neutral. Yeah. Um, so it's, unfortunately that one won't work, so it does in the front. Yeah, now it, it, the one thing that strikes me, and it's probably going to sound stupid, is how analogue that looks. It is literally pieces of metal is, yes. painted on, <laughs> we, everything I see is digital. And it kind of looks a bit more, I don't know. So yeah, in, in there you've got um, a, a piece of metal attached to a gyro that moves mm -hmm. around with it, and mm -hmm. obviously the white painted line. Mm -hmm. So you can see in the front cockpit, you see the white lines across the right. bar there. Right, gotcha. Um, and that basically moves as a gyro, stays mm -hmm. in space, and the aeroplane rotates around it. Speaking of Mustang, that looks just like the directional gyro from the Mustang. So it's just like a directional gyro from the Mustang. It's exactly the same. Wow, are they as terrible as they are in the DCS game? Absolutely, oh. yeah, they're appalling. <laughs> Um, so to set it, you choose your, your heading, obviously off the magnetic yeah. compass at the top. You find the heading, you yeah. set that, and then pull it out to activate. Yeah. And from there on, there's another gyro, and the aeroplane rotates around it. Beautiful. Wow. But they Beautiful. are terrible. Yes, yes. Uh, mm. uh, we've got our speedo there, so that's indicated airspeed in knots. Oh, it's very ambitious. It's very ambitious. <laughs> uh, so the Portuguese uh, flew um, Chipmunks, then the Harvard, and then the P-51. Yeah. And their philosophy when they built them was to have the same cockpit throughout. Right. So we've basically got a Harvard instrumentation set up, yeah. which is the same as a Mustang, apart from the Speedo. Um, yeah. Mustang's a bit faster. Mm -hmm. So this is a Harvard airspeed indicator. So mm -hmm. if you're operating Harvard, you're up here somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, today, looping would be down here, just about. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, up here somewhere. <laughs> Velocity, no, it never exceed uh, 155 knots. Yeah. Otherwise, the wings get a bit teary. Nicely marked that. Roger. It's very, very professional, Mark. <laughs> uh, does let me like barometric altimeter, uh, hundreds of feet around the outside. Hundreds on the outside with the big needle, thousands of the small needle. Now here's the interesting thing. That's not inches mercury. What is that? It's millibars or hectopascals, as they call them now. Now what standard for? Is that standard? For, what would RAF have? Yeah, millibars. They would have yeah. millibars as well, yeah, right? The Europeans generally always use millibars. Um, inches has been a bit of an American thing. Right, how interesting. Um, some some altimeters you'll see a separate window with inches on this side, yeah. but uh, not on this. So we've got about 1025 today, that's the pressure here at sea level at, at uh, Finland, about 8 feet wow. above. So yeah. we can set that with the knob here, so we've increased yeah. obviously higher pressure. 
the lower pressure. So yeah, that's what, that. hundreds of feet, that'd be 100 feet. Yeah. 200 feet, and this is 1,000. So if you wind that on, you see. Yeah. Now you're reading 1,000 feet. And this is literally, is this not just a glorified pressure gauge? It's exactly that, yeah. There's a little bellows in there and you, you squeeze yeah. it to set it and then it opens the atmosphere and it, it expands and wow. retracts as it needs to. Okay. Now can you see the ergonomic nightmare in here? You have your altimeter yeah. with a two needle system. Yeah. You've got your RPM gauge up here with a two needle system. Oh, that's useful. Um, and they're, they're nicely put together. And when you're flying at 2,000 RPM at 2,000 feet, <laughs> uh, if you're not used to the aeroplane, you can quite often look at the altimeter, right. pushing the stick forward, and think, why is, why is, it, why is it not moving? Right. Right down. How it's interesting. Okay, so that's RPM. Now, is that, is that literally the, the engine RPM? It's literally the engine RPM. That goes to a little electric generator hidden behind the instrument panel mm -hmm. there um, from a drive in the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's a little dynamo, basically. Right. Uh, VSI in, uh, I don't know. Is it feet? It's in 500 feet, 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 4,000 feet per, per minute. minute. Per minute, yeah. Right, gotcha. Okay, so that's that. Interesting mix of metric and, and imperial. But oh, that's, that's aviation. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's one thing I've, I've learned. Okay, so that's that. And how does that work? I, I've, I've never I thought I understood how that could possibly work. So there's a static system on, on, the, on the sensor, which is under the right wing. Yeah. Um, and that senses a change in the, the flow of the air over it, rather okay. than the air into it, which would be the airspeed and uh, yeah. the air into it. The flare of air over it and the static um, change of pressure that you get with the change of direction of air mm -hmm. registers on this as a, a higher or lower pressure, basically. Yeah. So if you were to pitch up um, wherever the, the hole is, it would it'd sense a change in that pressure, either higher or lower from where it should be. Yeah. And it senses that and gives you a, a rate. Does that mean they're becoming in, in, intrinsically unreliable when you have turbulence or something? Oh, in turbulence, it's terrible, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You get, get air going, it's, it just flies around all over. So. Okay, right, a lovely kind of a yaw slip there, which is great. Yep. Um, now we've got, on top of this, maybe you can explain it because I've never understood it, on top of that is our turn... Turn indicator. Indicator, and yep. how does one use that? So, um, when you turn the, the wings, obviously the artificial horizon will show you a turn, yeah. but this needle will fall into it as well. So yeah. if you put the right wing down, the needle should drop to the right. Mm -hmm. And basically shows you if you're flying an instrument only, your right wing is low. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you how far or anything, it just, it just says low. Uh, the marks are supposed to be for a rate one turn, which is a set speed at um, uh, is it two, three degrees a second mm -hmm. uh, rate of turn. Um, but yeah, the needle falls into the turn basically, uh, and the ball would generally fall in, and you stand on the ball with the rudder. Right. So keep the ball in the middle with your you feet. You stand into the rudder, you stand into the ball, don't you? Yeah, so if the ball goes to the right, you put yeah. the right foot back on yeah. the right foot. Okay, and then we've got some engine credentials. Yes. Uh, we've got oil temperature yep. in degrees Celsius, we've got oil pressure in pounds per square inch, yep. and fuel something. Fuel, fuel pressure. Fuel pressure. Inch. Right. Now that's a leftover from the Harvard. This aeroplane doesn't have a fuel pressure gauge yep. or a fuel pressure sensor, so that will be it. Um, but the oil pressure and temperature is what we're interested in. Roger. Um, uh, a flight stick. Yeah, so that's an interesting one. Certainly for you Mustang guys, is a Mustang grip. Ta-da! With trigger. Wow! Right, someone's going to get shot. That's our, that's our push to talk on the radio, so if you're going to yeah. squeeze that, tell me first, I'll turn the radio off. Right, <laughs> okay. But that's how we transmit on the radio these days. Right, okay. So that is a grip from a P-51. The wow. grip itself is a Mustang. Okay, is that handbrake down there? Not a handbrake, that's your flap lever. So I'm going to stand on this, lever. I won't pull that. No. <laughs> it's got two clicks, like a handbrake. Yeah. You need to press the, 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 um, the lock on it, put it back one, and the flaps come down to half, right. 15 degrees, and then you've got 30 degrees as full flap. Not to nudge that then. Uh, we've got our, our pedals down there, which no, so no toe brakes, just literally rudder. Just a bar. Left yep. and right, bar, yeah. Uh, handbrake yellow? Yes, that's a yellow handbrake, yep. How does that as that function then? It is a fly on fly off handbrake, so we pull it back with the collar up. Yeah. We can operate it. If yeah. it locked, we'll push the collar down. Wrap right. it on. Then to release, just pull it back. Right, and we've got a mixture two... control. Yeah. And throttle. Mixture and throttle, yeah. And that's the friction nut. So you might have seen those in, in yep. DCS. You never need them in DCS. Well, well yeah. Your, uh, How about that? Yeah. All the sticks. Um, trim wheel down there. Oh, is that elevator? Elevator trim. We only have elevator trim yep. at Chipmunk. Yeah, that's what you that's, need. That's your lot. Right, that's okay. Everything. Apart from the fuel cock, the yellow lever down there in the middle. Oh, what's that little... That's um, fuel cock. That's fuel cock, right. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's fuel on. That's, so it's like literally just off. a shuttle valve? Yep. Right. Right, okay. Oh, and of course, don't forget your absolutely uh, non period correct, I think, but probably uh, extremely useful magnetic compass. It's not far off period correct, actually. That's oh, really? Oh, how about that? So, there we are. And uh, what you missed uh, in the front that yep. you don't have in the back, we've got the electrical panel on this side. Yep. So, there are various lights, got um, 
landing lights, navigation lights. We've got a downward ident light, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So you can flash a light in the bottom in Morse code. Oh, wicked. Uh, starter, isolator switch, various generator, pitots, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, we've got our magnetos for the engine, mm -hmm. left and right magneto, there's a set of those in the back as well. Um, and our radio stack down in the middle. Yeah. So transponder and radio. Transponder and radio, and yeah, what? So our transponder's this one, Yeah. and that's our radio. And what, what band frequency band does that cover? Goes 1182360. Just having a quick look at the uh, the XREF model, and we've got apparently a different setup in here. Well, the gauges certainly look differently. Yeah, so the Portuguese one was set up for Harvard instruments. Yeah. So the air speed indicator, especially in this, is a lot more accurate. Yeah, it's right. More in the chipmunk speed range. Yeah, I see, yeah. So you can get a more accurate figure on that. Yeah. I personally find the oil temperature and oil pressure easier to read on the right hand side of the yeah, panel. Yeah, because you've got two separate gauges rather than a tri gauge, yeah. That's it. Uh, the turn the turn indicator is different as well. Yeah. And the artificial horizon is also slightly different. Oh yeah, right. And is that does that come from a different plane as well or is that specific that, to this? That was pretty standard at the time. I can't yeah. recall, they did do a slightly shorter version for the panel. Yeah. I can't remember if that was just chipmunk, but the actual readout phase is pretty similar to a lot. Period. Yeah, I can't help notice we've got a massive whomping great thing down there. Is it? Oh, down between your legs. That's yeah. a compass. It's right. a P-type, which you'd find in the lights of a Spitfire. Exactly, yeah. So um, you recognise that from DCS? Exactly, well, actually I don't recognise it because in DCS, it's unless you've got VR, it's unusable because it's behind the stick all the time. Uh, Whereas if you've got VR, I guess you can kind of look around and see it, but I've never actually managed to use it, which is incredibly frustrating. Uh, we're both flying with VR. And right, VR, well, so yeah, yeah. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, and then in the front it's got a different instrument stack down the centre. Yeah. That's radios and transponder set yeah. down there. Yeah. And a scaffolding pole instead of a stick. <laughs> it's a far nicer stick. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the scaffold pole. Oh yes, we don't have our classic Mustang stick in there. Very nice car, it's very nice. John, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Charlie, can good. Hi, can hear you. Good. We've had a radio Golf Charlie Golf Alpha Oscar and Golf Bravo Yankee Hotel Lima operating as vintage pair for radio check and airfield information. 335, on my 36, left hand, and the QMX 1027. 36, left hand, 1027, uh, five also vintage pair. And vintage pair attaching for Bravo. So, where are we going? Over in the radio, Golf Echo India, November India, uh, five miles to the southwest, uh, we'll join overhead for 36 left hand. Over in the other. And from Chicago, crossing 18 at Echo. What's the uh, wind direction today? It's northerly at the moment. Oh. So it's coming from over there. Okay. So we'll head to the far end of the airfield and uh, take off back up this way. So we've got a little bit of a zigzag going, so I can see John at all times. Right. It's a bit like the Spitfire Absolutely. and the Mustang in BCS. Of course, you lose sight of uh, anybody in front of you with a nose in the way. Problem with a tail dragger, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. So while he's zigging, I'm zagging. That's that's the plan, anyway, unless we get out of sync. <laughs> <laughs> now, your view in the back there, once the canopy's shut, is very similar to that of a Spitfire. Roger. You're sat about the same position on the aircraft as you would be in a Spit. Yeah. Presumably in flight, we're going to have a much less angle of attack. Yeah. Right view, yeah, over the front, yeah. Yep, you should be fine once we're in flight. Yeah. So. And it's a fully castering tail wheel on this as well, so yeah. there's no help from steering by awesome. the rudder. Right. Doesn't do anything, so it's all, all airflow over the rudder or brakes. Yep. And so far I got away without using the brake. Yep. Okay, so temperatures and pressures are in the green, we're good. Gonna wind up for a power check. So an 1800 RPM, one magneto off to make sure the other one runs and back on. And then the other one comes off. Watching for an RPM drop as well. And listening for the engine rough running. That's all good. That's both mags back. Carburetor heat comes on to make sure there's no ice in there. And believe it or not, you can get carburetor icing up to 30 degrees ambient temperature outside if it's humid. Carburetor heat back to cold. RPM rises slightly, that shows there's no ice. And then back to idle to make sure the engine's responding at idle. Cold temperature very low back here. 
Uh, give the gauge a tap, it should be about 40, uh, 35 degrees temperature. Okay. Quick control check around the box. And that's us ready, we'll take one stage of flat. November India downwind, 36 at that time. I don't think John saw him. November India final, 36, thank you. Right, the cap, be ready? Yes, sir. Okay, that gives John get airborne and we'll be right behind him. I think on the runner bars or... Yeah, you can follow me through like this, find the other. Got the exit taxiing from the pump to parking. Two rolling. So now we're up. Wow, that was really smooth. At this point, valid viewers, I have to tell you that really annoyingly, the forward-facing GoPro did not record. It's so annoying because I wanted to present this to you as mainly facing forward and then my stupid mug just in the little box around the corner. So instead of that, I'm going to have to try and convey through narration what we're doing. So sorry about that and we'll do our best. There's so much sensation of up and down movement. It's amazing, isn't it? Which is just not translated in any way online. So you can feel your a lot more in the rear airplane. If I play the rudder bar now, yeah, yeah feel that oh. difference on your. <laughs> uh. Right, are we going cap close or uh, staying at the stay close? Uh, as close, as long as you're in control, go as close as you dare, I say. Fair enough. We'll go display distances, how about that? Roger. At this point we move echelon left of lead, bloody close. So in the real world we always approach from below, so he's uh, silhouetted on the horizon. Uh, and we'll get ourselves in position then squeeze in the, uh, the distance. Roger. You're always going to have that escape route. As far as positioning, vertical positioning, are you always going to stay below? Uh, you'll see in a minute, we, we take a reference that puts me very slightly below, so it's easy to get out if I need to. Roger. So there's a little tie-down ring on the bottom of the wing, and I'm going to be lining that up with the chin of the aeroplane. Other people use the nav light on the wingtip to the spinner of the aeroplane, that gives you a slightly more forward-swept position. Yes. So you see that I'm creeping in underneath him now, so he's always skylined there, yeah. I'm not going to lose him in ground clutter. Yeah. Coming in on my reference, I've got my reference in sight now, pulling up onto it. And now lots of throttle movement, and we'll just stabilise in there, then I'll close in. Amazing. Waving at my wife in aircraft one. So that's on reference now. I'm just going to squeeze in. Alison looks very happy. <laughs> she does. <laughs> so in the real world, that's about as close as I like to get. Yeah, that's... Uh, you can already feel something coming off his wing. You can, yeah, just interfering with our wingtip. Yep. Amazing. Uh, now, it's all my job now is to do is to not hit him. Uh, uh, John's in charge now, radio, navigation, everything. All I have to do is stay here. Uh, and we practice wing following rather than radio calls, so he's not going to tell me about any turns he does. Yeah. He's just going to do it smoothly. The smoother you enter, uh, the better chance your wingman has to stick with you. Roger. So if he starts a smooth right turn, I'll be able to see him start it, and then I can follow, and he can increase that at whatever rate he wants after that, once I know it's happening. His find is that the key is in the smoothness of the leader. That's right, yes. Skill followers. That, that's it. A smooth lead should have a good formation behind him. How much are you manipulating the throttle? Now, uh, 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 some, whatever oh. I need. Um, 100 RPM or so, generally. Yeah, I can actually see that. If you want to put your hand on it and generally feel what I'm doing, as long as it yeah, doesn't drop. That's quite a bit of movement actually, that's that's about uh, equal to what we'll do it online, isn't it? Yeah, it translates quite well actually on, on that side of it. I can't show the valued viewers and board, but the uh, I can drive in the cockpit is the kick and the throttle are never, never still. One of the big uh, formation mistakes that you guys make is they try and hold things still. Some of the best pilot in the world. Uh, Tempest, uh, Lima Romeo is uh, lining up on the three six. Yeah, constant dynamic uh, uh, process. But the stick is always moving. Absolutely, throttle and stick and feet. Uh, and feet, of course. 
by year. Um, and and it's, that's how it is. In a Roger. A clockwise, clockwise prop? Uh, it's anti-clockwise. Anti so this is opposite to just about everything else on DCS. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. It's the same as a Griffin engine Spitfire. Okay. Can you see that yaw having to put in to, uh, to balance that prop? And so as a wingman for tight display points, I'm trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. reduce that uh, power change as much as I can, so I don't have to keep balancing right. with my feet. Yep, absolutely. Not always possible, certainly when it gets a bit turbulent. That's the main reason why we're so terrible at warfare. Turn the radio down a bit so we can hear each other. This is the hard bit on the chipmunk as well. All my radios are down there, so I have to look down yeah. to break out to get there. Hindsight, what I should have done is brought my little camera because I could have kind of filmed from here, but never mind. You just have to trust, take my word for it, value viewers. Oh, hang on, haven't I got one on my helmet? You've got one behind oh. you, look over your shoulder. Oh, right. uh, swap sides in there, you'll see a lot more yeah. of that on the video. Whoops. We'll go to line of stern. John's seen me, so I'm going to move. I'm going to sit in line of stern now. You haven't done any uh, yeah, plane communication on the aircraft. Nope, don't need to talk to him. I'm just listening to the radio, see what traffic's out there. Yeah. But I can talk to him, I can see him. So now the reference point, I want that tailwheel on the top of the windscreen as I look at it. And now what I have to do is follow him. Pretty much out of his wake here. Just about, yeah. If I sweep back a bit, I'll show you the wake. So we can come up all the way up here, look. Oh, oh, oh. And <laughs> not quite there yet. Here it comes now. There's, there it's coming now. You can feel it yeah. there. And there's the wake. I can smell his exhaust now as well. We're in his wake. Definitely in his wake now. Look. Uh. So we'll drop back down there. That's go back and And we'll come out to Echelon right now. A quick look to make sure it's clear. And this is my unnatural side. I, I work better on the number oh, three you're, slot. You're a lefty, are you? Yeah. Right. There's something about this position with the throttle in my left hand, I feel like I'm really hunched over and not as relaxed. Roger. Whereas I, I prefer the, the openness of the, the throttle on the outside. It's all psychological. It is all psychological, yep. John prefers it this side. When she settled down, it's actually quite a smooth ride. It's not bad, is it? Uh, bear in mind, I was told that light aircraft are always... I mean, I know it's a nice day, but... Is this your first flight in a light aircraft? Yes, this is my first flight in a light aircraft. Plenty of 737s, but... What a treat. They are in a turn there. You didn't tell me you were just turning. Uh, actually, I saw some sort of hand sit sign, but I had no idea what it meant. <laughs> so, your first light aircraft is a chipmunk. It doesn't get any better. Absolutely. Uh, just the value viewers are at 90 knots, 1000 RPM. Uh, we're at uh, parametric 1100 feet. So, there's a hand signal saying you're straightening out. Tango, uh, downwind for three seconds. Now, because I'm now on the outside of a turn, or was on the inside of a turn now, I need to increase the power to right. get myself back in. Yeah. So next time he does a turn, if we're on the outside of it, there we go, he's turning now, so yeah. I'm going to put power on, up, power up, look, we're going up as well. Yeah. On the outside of the radius, so I need more speed. Yeah. Once I'm stabilised, I can come back to where it was. Can I ask what the kind of operational cost that this is? Somewhere about £180 an hour. Roger. Or, or translates to more like um, six to £7,000 a year. Yeah. That's if you do nothing with it. <laughs> so you may as well fly it for that cost. Uh -huh. This particular aeroplane is busy, it's available for tailwheel conversions and uh, experienced flights, so it's, yeah. it's paying its way. Roger. I'm going to go to line of breast now and then see if he wants to swap the lead. Okay. So line of breast, I'm going to look through his canopy and try and line up both the windscreen pillars. And this is how we start our display. I find this so incredible, I find this the hardest of all. I lose my reference. It's horrible, isn't it? So I'm staring now at his windscreen pillar. I'm trying yeah. to line up the two lines so I can only see the one. Yeah, gotcha. And I've also got the landing gear from here. When I'm slightly lower, I can see his wheels are superimposed on each other. Yeah, ready now. He's becoming number two. Yep. Radio, Golf, Bravo, Bravo, November Zulu, request radio. So now it's all about the smoothness of the lead. We're approaching Folkingham, so it'll be display time in a minute. We'll do some turns for John. And John gets in nice and close. That's his um, his uncomfortable side, so he'll be looser that side than the other. So now my job now as a leader, look, I can take my hand off. There's no there's no throttle movement. I just set it and wait. Uh, and all I have to do now is keep this as smooth as I can. And he follows me along. You can feel all the thermals coming. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's one thing that I guess I've never experienced before. Been up in big jets, probably, but I guess you don't get as much effect. Uh, it's a much harder ride in the big jets. If it's, if it's big enough to affect a 737, it's quite a strong thermal. Right. Uh, so it, it's more of a speed bump feel. Yeah. Whereas what you're feeling here is all the warm air coming off the trees or, or the different colour fields are just wafting up and grabbing the wings. Yeah. Uh, a bit like a kite, really. I was a bit uneasy at first about it because it always seemed like there was a lack of control, but ride it after a while. I guess, don't you? You're just used yeah. to it. Yeah, it's, it's often easier just to ride it and not, uh, not try and smooth it all out. Yeah. So hand signal telling we're going right. Which, of course, you can't do in DCS, which is a bit annoying. Well, yeah, well, the other thing is, I, I keep going to press F3 on my keyboard for a flyby, <laughs> and I'm getting absolutely nothing. No, I was wrong. We're up at about 1,700 feet. We are now, yeah, descending right. gently towards a display altitude. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can go clear and wait. So you're swapping over. Yeah. There he is. Let's give you an inside turn, they were a bit harder. So he's got to bring his power down, descend and turn, at the same right as I'm rolling now. Yeah, yeah did that very well. That's his happy side, he likes that side. Yeah. Watching his rudder and watching him make those changes. Yep. Golf, the Red Bazoo, Louis crossing 1836. Cool. Nice turbulence that. Now it's always interesting to see that the aeroplanes don't get affected at the same time by the same bit of turbulence. Isn't that interesting? You'd expect just to set everything and fly in a straight line, but yeah. each aeroplane interacts totally differently. Yeah. Reasons why modelling these things are so difficult. Okay, Yeah, so he's coming to line abreast now, I think. Back with thumb. That's uh, telling me to get to the back. Roger. So we're now number two again. And you can just hear the workload going up on the aeroplane now as I'm trying to jockey, jockey it into position. Yep. Now, of course, the interesting thing is neither of us particularly like leading because it's a bit easy. Um, <laughs> for the air display, it's slightly different. You've got to make sure that the, the team is online and on the right distances and things. It's a bit of a challenge, um, but it's much more intense and interesting on the wing. Uh, as well, I always have to be. So, a little bit choppy today. Now, of course, because I'm staring at him, I can't look at my ball to work out if I'm in balance, so I've got to feel it. Roger that. Yeah, I'm watching it go left and right. Step by. And the real key to um, formation flying is to relax. If I start gripping the controls and stabbing at it, I'll start over-controlling. Huh? And quite often, certainly in display flying, I, I, you know, I relax myself, I, I release my grip and I move my shoulders just to say relax Dave, relax. And you fly a lot better. So it's uh, a change in your technique over the time you've been doing it? Yes. Um, I, I'm a lot finer on the controls these days uh, when, when I'm in practice. Um, we, we start off and it's a lot of jabbing and getting in and getting out and lots of power changes and that throws you out. And you just settle down to it and you change Yeah, the, the, what you're watching and how much you allow that reference point to move. Yep. So my goal is just to keep that reference point bang on the chin of the aeroplane. I haven't quite got there today because of the turbulence, but I'm trying. That's a bit, um, blue A team, red arrows, I, I did any type of virtual formation flying. They just look like a bunch of planes close to each other. Now, yeah. a bit more insight, I can actually see which of the ones and which ones. See the amount of movement and it's amazing, isn't it? So it's like, oh my god, this is actually really dynamic. So I find formation flying the most gratifying type of flying I do, because it's instant instant uh, feedback. Am I in, am I out? And I can see it. Now on the ground, you probably can't tell if I'm here, for example, where I'm now two inches out, or, or if I sit here and I'm back in. You know, that doesn't make a difference on the ground, but up here you can tell. It's fantastic. I guess the, the silhouette of that plane, fresh in your brain, and that's what you're trying to achieve. That's it. So as we approach the River Welland in about three minutes time, we'll start our, our display routine practice. Roger. Uh, it's not going to be particularly uh, intense, you should be fine. But if you don't like it any time, tell me and I'll tell John to knock it off. Roger. Now the tricky thing with wing following on a turbulent day like this is you're not sure if he's turning or there's turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a turn and I missed it. Yeah. So with this kind of flying, we'll be using about seven Imperial gallons an hour. About 30 litres of fuel. 100 and 145 horsepower, so... Yeah. I think I have visual on the river. Yep, yeah, should be on our nose. This is uh, spalding on the nose. Yeah, oh, wow. 
everything looks a lot different up here. Well, we'll see it from up here. <laughs> so that's descending that, that hand signal. Roger, watching one of the things you'll see a lot on DCS uh, information is people putting outside rudder on because they're getting scared of what's happening. You so mean by accident? Yes, so cross control. So at the moment, if I feel like I'm going towards him or I feel like I'm a bit close, so I put some left rudder in. I can still fly in formation here, look. It's but, slipping. But I now cross control, I'm slipping, yeah, and the aeroplane looks terrible. But you see that quite a lot in uh, inexperienced formation pilots in the real world. So they're getting close and they don't like it, so they put the outside rudder in yeah. to try and get away. And you end up just going, you know, yawing out of the formation. For, um, for escape route, is that downwards? Yep. Is it upwards? Or, or up and out, yep. So, with nobody else in the formation, I'll go up and out to the left. Yeah. And preferably in a display situation, that's what you do. But I can pull the power and go backwards and down as well if I want to. Yeah. Right, so this should be the beginning of a display routine. So, we're going to 200 feet more week this. Stand by for a break on this one. We turn this one over. Oh. How do people drop by? Can you see him? Right, no, I've lost tally. One o'clock. Chase here. Roger. So much different you got these G forces. Are you waiting to do the arrows for keys? Changes everything. So we're going down to obviously bring the power off to lose the speed. Okay, stand by for another break on this one. So I'm going to make sure the angle's not too acute here, otherwise I go through him, and that's never a good thing. Okay, stand by for a break. Here we go. Right, time for some fun. So I'm going to take us up to about 1,000 feet, well, 2,000 feet probably for safety. We'll do some loops and rolls, and then back to the airfield. John's clear on our left, he's over there. So, brakes are fully off, mixture's rich, fuel is on and sufficient, car heat, hatches and harnesses, you're strapped in and secure. Roger, we'll go straight in for a loop first of all. Making sure it's all clear around, there is some traffic about. We know John's down there somewhere, he's well clear, I can see him, that's good. 1500 feet will do. If you like it, tell me and we'll do straight into a second one. If you don't like it, tell me and we'll stop at the bottom. In for a loop. And stand by, and pulling up now. Full power. Over the top. There, upside down, back through the bottom. Here come the G's. Happy. All right, going again. Three, six, and one, zero, two, seven, I'll join downwind. <laughs> Keep your eyes and ears open, there's lots of traffic. 120 is good, power rolls to the right, up we can roll! All the power, rudder, roll, way to roll. <laughs> Big barrel, and we'll go to the right this time. Go, speed, over, down, speed. There's our speed, up to the up, roll! Go for 
grenade on a roll. At this point, the dreaded sickness kicks in. So the morning victory roll is coming up. So pitch to 45 degrees. Check for roll. Hitting all right? Yeah, just about. One more, here we go. Up, uh, check, roll. We're trying to miss about two minutes. Two minutes for the downwind. A little bit slow at the top for that one. <laughs> yeah, that's all we're going to do. We're going over time. I think it's never been a pilot, I tell you right now. There we go, we're low enough, that will do. Uh, and I'm loading. At this point, I'm sweating more than I have ever sweat in my life. How is that? I did it. You feel sick? Yep. Yeah. Of course. You're already good. Uh, I'll get this back to a thousand feet and you can have control for it. Okay, sir. Would you like control? Right. So okay. I'm stepping onto the rudder bar now. Yeah, take the rudders. I'll follow you through lightly. I'm now so. slowly taking some pressure off the stick. It's all yours. Okay. Right, very slowly. Let's you have control. It's a light aeroplane, so small movements. Have a play. So tiny squeeze the left rudder as you roll to the left, same as you go right. Oh. It's movement. It's a lot of reaction for a small move, isn't it? Yes. And this is what they tell me the Spitfire feels like. Scorpix Yankee is crossing 3-6 at Alpha, keeping a look out. Golf Lima Zero, Fenland. Go ahead. Is there an aircraft very near you? Oh, uh, Herb, there's three. Fenland Radio, Golf Hotel Lima, downwind 3-6. Uh, Golf Golf Charlie's overhead 2,000 feet, turning to descend on the dead side. That's back control, David. You have enough? You have control. I have control. Have okay. six. Happy with that? Yeah, thank you. I'm trying the radio. Right, now we're going to find the airfield. Tight turn, funnels two, three, six, and get down quick. It's now just a case of trying to hold on to my lunch until we get down. Not going to bath, are you? Thank you. I'll give you a bit of air if you like. Thank you. Did you? No, I didn't get sick. I was, I was, <laughs> <You're close. laughs> I was like, right, I'm just going to shut up now. <laughs> Play David for the plays. Oh. It's often best if you fly it because it has hand control over it. It takes your mind off it. Yeah, I thought that. That's why I accepted control and I thought, no, actually, this is a bit. Not, not happen, I'm, I'm going to just concentrate. Yeah, that's amazing, those loops and stuff like that. I've never done anything like that before. Crazy. And we hope you enjoyed that and to finish the video off i've got the guys into dcs and we're going to go for a little formation flight and have a little chat uh, i've got john on my right yes i'm here on your right and dave on my left guys we're going to get airborne for, before we do anything uh, if i crash i apologize but i'm going to try and take off now you guys take off when you're ready and or mate for mate is that a verb i don't know maybe on me frontier 51 valid viewers 
look at that. Wow, I did a relatively decent takeoff, which is highly irregular for me. Okay, guys, I am going to stick at manifold pressure 35 RPM. It's going to creep down to uh, 2700. Form up when ready, guys. Oh, they're already formed up. Of course they are. Of course they are. Um, right, let's have a talk about your backgrounds, guys. Can we start with John, please? How did you get from basically being a child to flying aeroplanes? <laughs> a lot of luck, uh, hmm. I think, was the main thing. Clearly, most people think aviation, lots of money, um, but no, that was not the case. Uh, my late uncle was my inspiration. He used to babysit for me and brainwash me to all those things, aeroplanes. And he ended up, um, he was an air cadet and saw the area of chipmunks up for sale and ended up buying one. Wow, that's amazing. And basically, we had nowhere to put it and it was a bit of a dream. So he went in a container for a year. But all the area of chipmunks were taken to area of Newton to be sold. And apparently this was their favourite aircraft, it was theirs. And they realised we were just down the road. And a year later we got this call saying, bring it back please. And they all helped get it flying. So that's kind of how we got the chippy flying. And then, one way or another, uh, my late uncle sadly died and we moved um, the airplane over to Cranwell. Um, then from area of Cranwell, there's a big clear out. So we, a guy called Charlie Brown, who I knew sort of of, got on board. He was a um, pilot there. And turns out, fly Spitfires, Hurricanes and the rest. Uh, he got on board and moved the airplane to area of Syreston with my dad, who don't fly. And basically, my dad said, would you be interested in teaching him to fly? He said, I'd be delighted to, and that's how it all started. Just yeah. a lot of luck. That's amazing, but I've always sometimes, that's what it mean, uh, That's what it needs. Same to you, Dave. Uh, in a nutshell, um, from about knee high to grasshopper, my granddad was taking me to Duxford for my birthday outings. When I was five years old, he took me for a flight in a Rapide with classic wings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was hooked ever since, so aviation's just been on my brain ever since that flight. So yeah, very lucky to get um, a trial flying lesson for my 12th birthday, and that was the beginning of my PPL. I, I did my PPL through my teens, uh, 20 minutes a month whenever I could afford to do it. Um, got to my uh, solo at 17 and uh, license at 18, and uh, went down the airline path after that. So took out a massive great loan and uh, went and self-sponsored myself into the airline industry. Ended up working for Ryanair and been a captain with them since 2010. Amazing, man. I've asked this question to everyone we have on interviews or whatever. It's always the same. They always start as a child, usually through family or circumstance, like they happen to live next to a base, like, you know, kind of like me. Um, so important to, to, to get into aviation earlier on, get it in the blood. Um, okay, guys, which kind of leads on to the next question, of course, which is, I'm aware there are buildings in front of us, uh, um, which is, how did you get, I mean, what are you doing in Vintage Pair um, and how did you get that started? Well, I had been display flying for about eight years before we formed Vintage Pair. And basically I did some formation flying with David because we both uh, volunteered for the historic aircraft collection at Duxford. That's how we both met. So we kind of got on doing a bit of flying, got on really well. And basically David got his um, display license and we decided to go from there. We both got clearly similar interests in historic aircraft. So, yeah. Yeah, so when I got my shiny new airline transport license, I emailed a whole load of the air, uh, the Warbird operators in the UK asking how uh, how I can get to fly the big V-12 aeroplanes. And one of them got back to me, that was Guy Black from Historic Aircraft Collection. He said, you know, come and volunteer with us. And he gave me a syllabus to fly, uh, Tiger Moth, Chipmunk, Harvard, um, display flying, aerobatics, formation, and all that kind of stuff. So I've slowly built that up over my uh, my time there, as well as volunteering with them. And met John, as John says, as part of the uh, ground crew with HAC. Yep. And then uh, Charlie was the main pilot there at the time, and he was going to do my formation training. And that's really how I first flew with John. He was uh, he was going to be the formation leader for my formation training. Gotcha. And just as an example. I'm at RAF Duxford on this Wednesday, and it just so happens, I think, Dave, are you flying there that day? I think, I think I you am, might yeah. be flying. Right, so you, you're going to be there, we're going to be watching, and that just shows how, I don't know, kind of a small world it is, and I don't know how cool it is. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, regarding Vintage Pet as a business, people that may want to come and uh, have a go and kind of almost do what I did with you guys, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because 
Alison sorted it all out for me. I don't really know how you guys are operating, how to contact you and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm a flying instructor and uh, own the chipmunk and I put two and two together and uh, it's a very, very popular aircraft. So many ex-air cadets and uh, vintage aeroplane types that want to come and fly it. So um, under Fend and Flying School, I've set up to offer those flights with my chipmunk. That's the, uh, the silver Portuguese one. And uh, for special occasions and uh, a little bit more money, we can put John on the wing as well for formation experience. So anything from 20 minutes solo, um, you know, one aeroplane flying around and I'll do some aerobatics or some uh, gentle sightseeing up to up to an hour formation. Uh, any package in between is available. Roger, and I'll obviously have the links in the video description so you guys can come and we're going to go again. And Ivan from GR is about to book if he's not already booked. So uh, you're about to become very popular. Um, guys so that's we've talked about everything i can think of let's put you two through your paces the first thing i noticed obviously most of gr or at least the guys you see in the videos and stuff we most of us aren't real pilots we're just like you know we like virtual piloting and, and whatnot and we can immediately tell that you two guys are real pilots because as soon as i took off you're immediately on my wing and whatnot so the valid viewers are going to want me to test you two guys out so i'm going to start doing some very you know as you know i'm not a real pilot and i'm not particularly good but you guys are going to have to follow me okay guys so do your best I am going to start with the right roll. Try not Have to punch you up to this point. <laughs> Introducing a little aft stick. We're going to spice things up. So as we said on the flight cap, as long as you keep it smooth entries, yeah, exactly. we should be able to stick with you. Exactly. And uh, just to reiterate, you guys, in real life, don't use the command. You don't use verbal commands. It's just uh, hand commands and just following. So. That's correct. So for transiting, we'll use hand commands because there's a lot of strain level for a long period of time. Yeah. And then display-wise, you know, clearly we wing follow, as you say. Roger. Well, audio commands are too easy then. I'm going for wing following. Things may get a little spicy, guys. So you may have to do whatever you need to do. It's now the type of we're sponsored by strong parachutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be very soon. I see the buildings. Roger. 350 feet you can jump out on the strong so uh, we right. should be all right <laughs> right oh let's see me let's see me right i'm going to have to put the power on oh, i don't think this is going to end i'm well. going to stall it guys i'm going to stall it why did we do this we're good we're good we're good we are stalled oh this is going to be fun yeah. yep i'm falling out of the sky yeah, look at the boys! I got them! I got them! Alright, let's change, let's change. I ruined it. One of you take the lead and um, and we'll stick with you. Just if you play down the coast, please, guys, so I can keep an eye on you. And Dave I'll come meet you up. Low 12 o'clock. Yes, gotcha, right. Putting in the gas, and here I come. Why are you running, David? Uh, 337. Guys, I hate to be that massive noob, but um, why did we st why did we stall there? Why how come in a chipmunk? Which is a great plane, but it's got exactly zero power. We didn't stall doing a loop at all. And how come we would have had 300 miles an hour there and we stalled out? What am I doing wrong with my loop for the fact that I'm stalling? That was airspeed and rate of pull, so you didn't quite get to the top fast enough. Did it need more rate of pull? Yeah, so you're heading up for too long and the airspeed washes off uh, at right. a certain rate. And you're just too slow through the top. Roger, makes sense. So you, you, yep. you can start there at 500 miles an hour and pull gently and still stall out if you don't pull enough. Interesting. I'm on uh, Leeds left echelon now. Visual. Just give us a little bit more in hand, David, if you can. A bit more in hand, yep. coming back a little about. Are you on my right, John? Um, I'm trail at the minute. Okay, I'll give you a right turn. Hey, fun. Okay, Cap, going right. Okay. Trying to remember what you taught me about using the rudder when the power goes on and off. It's very hard to feel in this, obviously you don't have that your feeling. It really is, it, isn't it? It really is. The it's it's with that. one thing DCS is yep. really hard at. It's one thing I noticed in the in the chip, how much immense, the especially I guess because it's a light aircraft, it, maybe you can feel it even more. But every, I could feel every time Dave touched the pedal or the stick, I could feel that thing wiggling about up and down and left and right and yaw and everything. And how much you could, not literally, but almost do it with your eyes closed. Yeah, it's a very, um, very good aeroplane for talking to you. You can feel everything through the seat of the pants on the chipmunk. Well done. Uh, rolling level. Where are you, John? 
Still um, quite trail. What airspeed have you got? Uh, 260. Okay, you're pulling me. It really is a joy. This must be one of the best flight models in DCS. It's such a joy. It's a joy to fly, but how accurate, as we were saying earlier, you no, just don't know. No, no, don't know. Maybe if you got a real... I was thinking about this. Maybe if you got a real Mustang pilot on with a lot of hours, but even then, because there's no feel, probably you wouldn't. You still wouldn't know. You can test. It's the, also yeah. on your hardware, though, as well. How long is your control column, etc.? Yeah. Actually, Nick's the man to ask on that one. He's got plenty mm. of Mustang time. I'm currently running 27.55, and I've got anywhere. It's just, uh, so we've just, just broken the plane, basically. As I get broken, yeah. 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 So do you want to head back to Minhad and pick you up, or do you want to call that there? Oh, I'll go to. I'll grab another one then. Cause yeah, we'll come and pick you up. I've got a little okay. time. Right left. If we do a merge, guys, if I'll split left a little bit and we'll see if we can get John go through the middle in a head-on merge, wouldn't that be interesting? Oh, I always see is is left low, left low. Yeah, visual. Yeah, I'm on bracket and left. Woohoo! <laughs> there we go. Can you guys form up or try a loop? Yep. Okay. Three seconds away. And left in place. Yep, I see ya. Two in. Yeah, see ya. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna trick us up to uh, 40 inches, 27. Power going in. Okay, nosing over, we'll get the speed and we'll go for a loop. Does a wing flyer ever look at his instruments or is he only ever looking oh. at the lead? Don't take your eyes off the lead. Mm -hmm. If right. anything, it's a very, very quick glance, more peripheral. You might be looking at where the needle Pulling. is in the number. Pulling up now. Increasing. Increasing the pull. Increasing. Oh god, this is hot. Oh. Pulling. Pulling. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Oh. Keep pulling. Easing. Oh no, no. Yep. Easing. Pulling. Ah. Pulling. I see Cap in my mirror, he's still there. I've never done that before, that was so hard, man. <laughs> Come on, let's do another one. Another one? Oh. Okay, uh, let's recover some altitude. John did 10 times better than me, I was like, oh my god. I've got to say, I was struggling. Ah. It's been a while. Am I meant to be ruddering at all over there? I'm just, I wasn't really sure. I, yeah, I, just try and squeeze the right rudder at the top, really, not much. Yeah, right. The problem is, it's, it's so you can't feel it, so it feels a bit springy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, everyone ready? Two. Yep. Nose going down for the speed. And pulling up now. Freezing. Pulling. Easing. And pulling. Got it, guys. I got it. wasn't You know, it wasn't professional, but I stuck I stuck a new wing all the way around. Just Woo, looking, good. Good. looking good. Well done, guys. Okay, we better finish off with the valley viewers have lives. We'll do a three, two, one break. Dave will go vertical high. John goes 45 right. I gotta go 45 right. Okay, guys, it'll be three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. There we go. Well done, guys. I mean, it's great flying with the actual kind of formation pilots. Uh, it just makes it so much easier because you guys know exactly how you have to do it in real life. Not saying anything bad about my boys, but most of them aren't, profession aren't professional formation pilots. That makes a difference. Really good to see you, um, to speak to you. And uh, like I said, we'll be booking in probably a couple of months anyway, and we'll see you again. Well, thanks very much, Cap. It's a pleasure yes, to fly with you. Cheers, boys. All right. I'll catch it's you. It's been a lot of good fun.